Well, those of us who play the clarinet are very fortunate that uh, Mozart had this wonderful relationship with Anton Stadler, the clarinetist. And um, we're making a celebration disc, really, this year because it's the 20th anniversary of clarinet classics and it's the 200th anniversary of the death of Anton Stadler. And we're recording not just the clarinet quintet, but a variety of fragments that Mozart wrote for Stadler. And I think the Stadler brothers, because his younger brother also played the clarinet, and the basset horn. And uh, I'm very pleased that for this fragment, um, I'm joined by my dear friend, Michael Harris. And uh, in fact, uh, we used to play together as teenagers in the National Youth Orchestra a very long time ago, uh, longer ago than I'm prepared to tell you. Michael, it's very nice to see you. And you, Colin, it's a great pleasure. Yeah. Um, we've got uh, two very um, contrasting instruments here. I'm playing a C clarinet, um, which has got eight keys. This is a copy of an instrument from about 1800. And what about this strange looking beast? Yeah, um, well, this is a baston. This is made by Rudolf Tutz in Innsbruck, um, who has a sort of modern shop on the river. I don't know whether you know Innsbruck, and a beautiful workshop round the back. Um, he's a third generation. Maker. In fact, his, his predecessors were brass makers, hence this beautiful hand-beaten brass bell here, which is rather splendid. He's just been asked to make two copies of the um, Cor Anglais for the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra, which he's, he's absolutely very chuffed about. This is a copy of a, a, a Heinrich Grenzer basset horn, round about the same date, about 1800, so officially a little bit late for Mozart. But, um, as you can see, it just has a few more keys on the back to get down to the bottom notes through the, through the box here. It's got a strange bend in it, hasn't it? It has got a strange bend in it, and that's so that you can actually reach the bottom notes. They hadn't sort of devised a system where they had really long straight keys. They were too unreliable then. So they had to bend the bore round in an S shape through this box and back out here. So hence the slightly muffled sound of the very bottom C. But uh, down to there, it has a, a beautiful resonance and a very particular sound, a very pure sort of sound in the so-called clarinet register. Mozart, it, it came to have religious connotations, I think, because, the, the, of course, the baton plays a very prominent part in the Requiem. Absolutely. But what we're doing here is something rather different, because the two of us are playing contrasting instruments with a trio of strings, violin, viola and cello. And this is a hundred-bar fragment that Mozart wrote. It must have been for the brothers Stadler, I think, probably with Anton Stadler playing the C clarinet and maybe his brother Johann playing the baton, because mm. I think Johann specialised... That's right. In, in, in the basset horn. And Mozart left about a hundred bars of this. Um, and I've been very keen to play it and indeed record it. And uh, I discovered uh, this fantastic uh, completion by the German musicologist Franz Bayer, which he did about 30 years ago. And um, so he's uh, made it about double the length of Mozart's fragment. And I think, although it's rather difficult to play, I think for both of us, um, <laughs> he's done a pretty good job. What do you think, Mark? He has, yes, absolutely. Yes, I mean, the development section goes into some rather strange strange keys, but um, I think on the whole it's, it, it, it actually captures Mozart's style beautifully, actually. Thank you. 
it's in yeah. wonderful fragments, actually, Mozart. Absolutely. And I think this yeah. business, actually, that he, he was carrying his, his music in his head all the time and just needed the time to write it down, I mean, that's really been discredited, I think. I think, like everybody else, Mozart had to work at composition. And it meant sometimes, you know, if pieces weren't quite working out, he abandoned them, and then we're left with 100 bars, uh, as in this piece. But mm. it's frustrating, really, because it would have been wonderful if we'd had a whole quintet. Absolutely, yes. Um, and that could easily have happened, I think. But yeah. Mozart was a pragmatist. I mean, he wasn't necessarily writing for posterity. He was sort of writing for the next concert. I think one interesting thing about the basset horn part is how it fits with the cello, the actual colour of the lower notes of the basset horn in harmonic passages I've noticed through sitting here recording it these couple of days is, is the, the, the low notes and how Mozart uses it in conjunction with the bass instrument. very different playing on these instruments it's a much lighter sort of sound and actually the modern clarinet for me sounds very heavy in this sort of repertoire so people sometimes say you know is it more restrictive playing on period instruments I think directly the opposite actually I think it gives you a freedom um, and I think you can get closer to the music or am Absolutely. I just uh, I mean a, a world of fantasy here Michael do you think? no I don't think so I mean as I was saying about the bass notes here all the time I think with the gut strings of the of the, of the string players that the one, one sees these colours that Mozart obviously saw in these instruments blending with, with the strings. Mm -hmm. 